So then, all right, we're recording. And so when you mentioned the report, um, are you talking about this particular report, double HG mm -hmm. transaction detail? Yeah. So my goal for this call is for you to stop using this report. Because True. number number one, it's a report. There's two different things, right? Reports and saved searches. So it's mostly my fault for introducing people to this report when we just got started. I created it. Yeah. And, and so realizing that it led people down a wrong path. And now people just started using it. Uh, main difference between reports and saved searches is that reports is you know a balance sheet, uh, an mm -hmm. income statement where there's a very specific format to it, and the same information in the same format is needed on a regular basis. That's a report. But most of the time, people use this, and this was actually designed with the intention of having a saved search. A saved search is an ad hoc, like right now, this is the, these are the information I need and I need to, I need to see them. Right now, I mean, the, the following week, maybe I need a little bit of information. Maybe I need to add this information. I don't need this particular information. And so a lot of times this, that's what people end, are using this for. And Save search loads a lot faster. Like it just loads so much faster than a report. So if you really don't need it to be a report where, you know, a report where you submit it to leaders and the leaders look at it, if it's really mm -hmm. for an internal use, then mm -hmm. most of the time you really just need to go to the saved search route. So my one of the things, and it's good that we're recording this, is one of the things mm -hmm. that I'm going to do is teach, teach you how to have your own personal pet saved search. So that, um, and then you also need to teach your country leaders to have their own personal saved search. And the, the purpose of this is that whenever you need something, you customize mm -hmm. it, and then you're not responsible for what other people see because it's only yours. It's your own saved search. So I'm going to teach you the, the basic building blocks of what we need to have our own saved search and how you can further customize that depending on what you need on particular moments that you need it. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to show you my, my pet saved search first to kind of give us a finish line and then we'll work our way through creating your own base level of, of saved search that you can save as your own. So in my um, shortcuts, you know how to save pages into, short, into the shortcuts, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have this TEB transaction search. Um, I, I'm sharing my screen, right? Can you see my net suite? I see your screen, I see your screen, I see your screen. Okay, that's I'm looking cheerfully. <laughs> Let me make that a little bigger. Okay, so this is my TEB transaction search. As you'll notice, the public box is not checked. That mm -hmm. means only I can see this. Yeah. And the basic building blocks of a search, the two most important things are criteria and results. So criteria and results. Um, available filters, we can also look at that later, but that's not as important as criteria and results. Criteria means what will this um, search look for? So mm. the, the first thing to consider here is this is a transaction type search. So, mm. when you, so there's a lot of different kinds of searches within NetSuite. You can search for employees. You can search for different kinds of um, like transmittal entries. You can search for entities or countries. You can search for vendors or customers. This particular search is a search for transactions. And okay. a lot of times you can package this transaction in a way that, you know, by default, you'll get a list of transactions. Mm -hmm. but there's a way to modify this where you can actually see balances, for example. Um, I can, we can package this, this search such that I can get a list of RCs and if I just look at all of the income and expense transactions that hit that RC and sum all of, 
all of the amounts of those transactions, then basically I'm looking at an RC balance report. So the, the very basic way to do a search is just gives you a list of whatever you're searching for, which is transactions. But we can also group and sum those transactions in a way that sort of elevate the search beyond just being a transaction search. Okay. So for this one, what, I'm look, what we're looking at is this is a transaction search. And the very first thing most of the time that you want to do is you only want to look at posting transactions. There are several ways to only look at posting transactions. Uh, but the easiest one is have a criteria that says posting equals true. And that's sort of the minimum amount of criteria that we want. And the rest is just depending on, on what we need at given times. So if so ignore ignore this second and third. Maybe we can remove okay. that basically. So this is the very first one. I really just want to see posting transactions. Hmm. There are certain times where you might want to see non-posting transactions. For example, you have non-approved journals hmm. or non-approved expense reports. They're not yet posting. They don't yet have a GL impact. So you might want to say posting equals, click this, uh, no. No. If it says posting equals false, then it will only show you the non-posting transactions. Posting. Or you, you may want to say posting is either, which means it's posting or not, then it show. But in this case, if you're, if you're going to choose posting is either, then it's just the same as not including that criteria mm. at all because yeah. what's what's the point mm. so whenever i run this transaction search looking for specific things that i want i mostly just edit the criteria and then run it so i, I often change the criteria whenever i run this depending on what i'm looking for the results so, oh go ahead the criteria, are the criteria predefined or uh, i mean the accountant can define the kind of the criteria you want to see exactly I mean, is there a list of trans, trans criteria already defined well there are a lot so this is actually one of the most confusing parts of creating a safe search is which ones of these are applicable for us <laughs> and okay. which ones are there because netsuite came packaged with them that we don't actually need. So okay. I'll show you later the, some of the things that I use most often. So obviously, the, one of the things that I use most often is posting. It's always there. And I want posting equals true. Hey, give me one minute. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll show you the other criteria that I use. So, results tab. So, again, criteria answers what do you want to see? Okay. And so, uh, and then we'll explore that later when we're actually looking at specific uh, things. Okay. Re results means how do you want to see them? So let me just click up. So anyway, let's just go ahead. So these different lines here are the different mm -hmm. columns, are the different columns of the search. So okay. You, so you can see here entity, entity, no hierarchy, date created, date period, document number different kinds of amounts and I'll show you later what um, those mean. So just for a quick sample on what that is. So let me just um, let me hit preview here. Let me f do some more criteria so that we won't look at all the transactions in the world. So for example, just entity is Andorra. Oops. All right, so in addition to posting is true, I limited the criteria to only transactions that are happening in Andorra entity. But in the case of uh, in a, a country, the entity will be only the, that's counting, right? That's right. So okay. the, it depends on your role. So my role is 
international Look. finance, I can see every country. But for like if a country level person is doing this, you wouldn't he wouldn't even need to use the criteria because he wouldn't be able yeah. to see anything else anyway. You would probably need it as an in your role with your area. Yeah. So again, the results are the different columns. And so let me let's preview this so you can see what it looks like. I'm not saving it yet. Okay, so so these are the different columns. Entity, date created, date period, document number, account. So th these are the different lines that I have in my results and now they're columns in my in my search. So with that being said, were, have you been able to log into your NetSuite now? I was following you, so I didn't check okay. it. I didn't check it right now. So because... Uh, all right, so now we're looking at your screen. Yeah. And so go to reports. Oh, first, first, first. I want to check if your preferences have internal ID checked. Do you know if you have in your preferences view internal ID? No. Okay, so click the, go to your preferences in the house. I, um, and then set preferences. set preferences. Yep. I would always encourage everyone to check this. I'll share you later, share with you later. Why? And then, oh yeah, it is checked. See under defaults on the right <laughs> side, it says show internal IDs. So you're good. Um, so go to reports. Did you see what the uh, checkbox I was? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So show internal checked. IDs. Okay. Yep. So okay, okay. go reports. to reports, uh, new search, new search. Uh, New search. Uh, I think it's the fourth one. New oh, church. Okay. Yeah. New church. Okay. Yep. That. And then see, those are the, all the different kinds of um, things that you can search for. A lot of them they, does, don't really make sense for us, but some of them are, you can search for different accounts. You can search for different RCs, mm. for different segments, for different donors, different employees. And we can explore all those later. But right now, we're looking at a transaction type search. So scroll all the way down to letter T. And look for transaction. Transaction uh, is no, uh, not that. On, on transactions. Uh, yep. Transaction. So I click on transaction. Yep, click on transaction. Yeah. And then. Once you've clicked on transaction, you'll see that, um, yeah, so click, click create saved search. So you are creating your own create saved search okay. for now. Yep. And then. Uh, I can rename it. Oh, wait. So what's your role right now? I'm using finance role, finance leader. Okay. Yeah. A, a finance leader role should be able to create um, yeah, so rename it. Just, um, this one does, uh, yeah, so finance leader. So I think it's the accountant role that can create a search that is visible to everyone. Like you can publish a search that other people can use. The accountant can do that. But everyone else can only create a search that's only for themselves. So like in my screen earlier, you saw the public checkbox. This one yeah. does not even give you an option to, to make it public. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to do right now anyway. You're just creating a search for yourself. So um, so the only difference is the this checkbox public one. But the um, process is the same. Yes, yes, exactly. The process is, uh, is still the same. So if you okay. happen to be logged in as an accountant, and we're doing this exercise, uh, we'll, we'll just need to make sure that the public checkbox is not checked. Okay. Okay, so, okay. so criteria. So again, what I said earlier, you generally want your criteria to be posting equals true because mm -hmm. normally that's what the kind of transactions we're looking for, the kinds that really had a GL impact. Mm -hmm. So select that, click yes. Yes. And then go to results. So normally, these are the 
columns that 90% of the time I want um, once I show you later. Those ones that you see by default, most of them you don't need. So mm -hmm. go ahead and delete delete those. So click or click the first one that says order type. I should leave here or no the the words itself. The word okay. order. Order type and click remove. Okay. Yep, okay. remove that. No, no, no. Just I just mean, click remove. Yep. Even the asterisk, click that. I'll show it. Um yeah, click remove. Date, we might we might want to keep the date. So yeah, go, I need that. Yep, then go to as of date. And I'm remove. not sure I need this. I don't right, need you, don't, this. you don't need that. Tax period, you don't need that. Is no is no way to select a multiple line, a multiple row to, to, to remove? Um, I don't think so. But do, you don't have to click because you don't have to click o okay though because um, just click the next one. So name, sometimes we need that. Memo, sometimes we need that. So let's keep, keep those in. Yeah, amount, well, okay, about. amount. Remove amount because we'll replace that with something else. So remove that okay. because I don't trust that. Yes, then click yeah, remove that. Remove weird. that. Now source transmittal record, keep it. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. with you what that is. Assessment process failed, remove that. And then remove all the rest at the bottom. Yeah, re just click remove. Click remove. Okay. Okay, so the source transmittal record, do you know what that is? Yes. Okay, so that. <clears throat> Just for the benefit of the recording, that's uh, that connects a transaction with its transmittal entry. Yeah. So if uh, trans if an if a transaction it comes from a transmittal entry, then that there will a there will be a value to that. So let's while we're talking about that, go ahead and add WHQ transmittal payment. Just click on the drop down box on and and look for WHQ transmittal payment. So I, I also find that field important. So the, uh, scroll up, scroll up. No, 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 not that. Just scroll up, further up, further up. So you will Can know, you? no, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll explain later why, why, why we don't need that. Scroll up, you just trust me, scroll up. But you said WHU, right? Yes, yes. But yeah, just trust me. Scroll up. No, 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 no. Just scroll up. Scroll up. It's I'll not No, no, no. I'll, I'll explain here while I'm asking you to scroll up. <laughs> okay. Yes. I need you to trust me. You'll see it again. <laughs> so you'll see that all of these are fields dot, dot, dot. And then once you get to A of that, then you'll see another set of... Um, list and okay slow down a little bit as you scroll up you'll see okay, uh, okay there we okay. go all right click that so this first set of, this first list is just basically the names of those things and once you got to the end of that list there's another list that says fields dot 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 fields dot 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 so for example um click account look for account so right now you already have account right and this account field just gives you the account number. Yeah. But what if you want the account name, just the account name? So for example, click the scroll, click the drop down, and go to scroll the way all the way up to letter A. Yeah. Okay, so with account, let's scroll a little bit down. So account you you only have the option for account and that means that's the whole that's the whole thread of account number and account description but what if you only want to show just the account name for example or just the account number mm -hmm. then you scroll all the way down to the account fields okay and then it it allows you to in a sense dive deeper and get more details about that particular field. So, um, yeah, go all the way, all the way down to the end of that list. Basically, you'll you'll get to Z again, and then it will start again back up at A. So it it gives you the sort of more more details about 
that field. <clears throat> yep, almost there, almost there, almost there. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you passed it. You passed so it. there is no sign between the, this first category to the uh, and the next one. Yeah, you'll know that when when you're in the next set of lists because you'll see those fields dot dot dot. So if you click mm -hmm. that account fields, mm -hmm. account fields, it gives you the option to what about the account do you want to show? Uh, okay. So click that and then just say account number number. Just click for number. I look for a number. There, number. Just click number, and then so now you now you're only just showing the just the number because if you don't care about the the description. Yeah. So that's what those um, the fields dot 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 is about. Uh, like if you want more information, rather in addition to just the basic ones. All right, so I'll show you the other columns or in the results field that I normally also use in addition to those. Um, in your area level role, you, you might want to also add the entity column if you're searching mm -hmm. for transactions from more than one entity, country, so type mm -hmm. entity. And not just the entity, Scroll down one and entity no hierarchy. Oh, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. So the one that says entity no hierarchy because you you know how the whole string looks like, right? Like to describe, say, your area office, it says world headquarters, Francophone yeah. Africa consolidation, um, then Frank, um, Francophone Africa area WHQ sub. If you don't want to see the whole thing and you just want to see just the name of the entity, then that's mm. what you choose. No hierarchy. I like that. Okay, another field that is also very useful is look for date created. Because a lot of times, many transactions are created not on the date that they're posted. So, so date created is a very useful field to analyze, like you know, transactions based on when they're actually created. Mm. And then you already have period, document number, responsibility center is important. So go ahead and look for responsibility yeah. center. And click the one that says no hierarchy. I mean, it's it's up to you. Res the responsibility center shows the parent colon and the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No hierarchy yeah. just shows the number. Yeah. And it's then, okay, and then let's look at amounts. I asked you earlier to remove the word amount mm -hmm. because NetSuite, uh, that field behaves differently depending on the account type. So I'd rather see them separated with um, the debit and credit. Mm -hmm. So there's a field called amount debit. Oh, sorry. It's fine. I click the quantity. Yeah, you don't want that quantity. I mean, you may want it later, but no, uh, not I, in I, the I, basic level of search. <laughs> click the one that says amount debit. And hopefully, as you're scrolling through the, these, you're looking at the different options available to you. Mm -hmm. That even though we might not select some of these now, at least you see what's out there. So, amount so the debit, amount. Is the amount debit in the local currency or is in the global currency? So by default, a saved search is run according to the users, um, according to the employee record. So for example, okay. if I run the same search that you create because I'm in the WHQ, mm. it will show to me as US dollar. but. Yeah. If you run it in your FFC, it will show us US dollar. But if the same search is run by another person in a country, it will show in their local currency. But there is a way to show the, the different currency. I'll show you later. Okay. So yeah, amount debit. Yeah, so the ones that say amount foreign currency is um, the 
original currency of the transaction is what will be shown. So you may want to include that later or not, depending on what you want. Not necessary US dollars. So amount credit. So the next one would be, so you have the amount debit and then the next one would be amount credit. Yeah, so you see those fields, amount foreign currency. So, yeah. so I if, think I need, I need them. Mm -hmm. So I yep. can see. Like, yeah, up to you. So you can also go ahead and add them. And then are another... those criteria translated in language that change language are they translated? Um, so these fields, um, the ones that came with NetSuite, yeah, generally yes, they are translated if they came with the um, if those languages are part of the language packages that NetSuite came with. So the ones that are custom to us that you know we as Campus Crusade just added in there, like the Responsibility Center, it depends on if we entered a translation for them in the system or not. But if you want to make sure, so right now the search we're creating, it's only for you, right? You can't share yeah. this in public. But later, say you log in into accountant role or you have a, an area reporting role, I believe, if you if you log in as your area reporting role and you create reports that other or searches that other people can use, um, do you see that custom uh, uh, label translation column? At, yeah, um, custom label. Yeah. Right. So, and then the translation too. You can specify a language there. For example, yeah. Go ahead and click that field. Yeah. So, for example. Okay. Um, so if you generate the save search right now, because so the date field, it will appear as a date column header. But if you specify something different there, depending on the language of the person viewing the search, then whatever you type in here is what they will see. Okay. Okay. So there should be a French there. Yeah, there is French. I saw French. Yeah. So, so other... French. so. In addition to the, those four amount fields, I'd like you to also add the, the field that says amount signed. Amount signed. So the amount signed, uh, go scroll down a little bit. There. So the amount signed is, um, it always does debit minus credit, I think. Yeah, it, because, um, and I'll show you later why that's different from just the amount because the amount actually sometimes even adds debit plus credit, which is annoying. Uh, so, and then the rest of the columns that I add, you know, are other segments like CPR designation, MCC, restriction mm -hmm. class. Um, I don't always add them because I don't necessarily want to see them, but if you want to add you know, those other segments like location, project, source, no. then they're all in there if you want them. Just saying that okay. you, we don't need to add them now, but yeah. they're there. So I'd like you to save that. And generally that will be your, your base or unless you can also reorder. Let's, let's reorder them first, depending on how you want to see, see them. Maybe you want to... So the way, it, um, the way to reorder them, to change the sequence, is you click on one row. So usually, for example, click on entity. And I generally would want that entity to be way down to the left. Entity, so yeah. click the entity. And then hover your mouse over the six dots to the left. To the left. Move, and then drag it all the way up. Yep. So, I mean, you can go ahead and do that for any other field that you want to change the sequence of. Maybe you'd want to put okay. the source transmittal record in the WHQ transmittal payment all the way to the end because you don't always need to see them. They're just important to see most of the time. But 
you, they don't need to be in the middle and blocking everything. No, no, you need to click on the words first mm -hmm. and then drag. Or you can also click move to bottom, move to bottom. But it's slow, move to bottom. It's going slowly. Yeah, yeah up to you. So if, if there's other fields that you want to reorder, it's up okay. to you. Yeah, okay, I can do it. I can do that yeah, later. Can later. Okay, mm -hmm. so now go ahead and save oh wait uh scroll up a little bit so change the sort by wait wait so there in the middle of your screen it says sort by yeah, yeah so normally i i use that by default as sort by date just because if i'm looking at transactions i want transactions to you know yeah. hold, hold their yeah. first but you can do whatever you want um sort by uh, amount depending then you can always mm -hmm. change it later so go ahead and save that um, so now once you've saved that, so that's your base. And then once mm -hmm. a result comes up, um, so now that you have a base that you can use for, like now if you oh. need something later, then you can just modify that search depending on what you need. Oh, a connection. Uh, you have to res do all of that again. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm here. So after saving, uh, it's, it's, it's okay? Where can I find it now when it is saved? Uh, is it on save report? Well, yeah, I would have, once it's saved, I would have encouraged you to include it in your favorites, in your star, so that so, you can like, more easily get it. But yeah, and, we, we weren't able to get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's, that's our struggles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you just watch the video and do all that again. Um, so, all right, resuming recording. All right, so right now you have a saved search, right? That's your base. Yeah. Yeah. Now, anytime you need to search something, you only need to go to your favorites to go there. And depending on if what we're looking at right now is something that you want to see over and over again, or you want to see it just for now. Um, so go ahead and click that. If this is something you just want to click for now, then you edit the criteria, edit the results. But instead of hitting save, you just hit preview and then you have your results. But if what we did now is something you feel like you need to to see over and over again, then give it a different name and save yeah. it as that different name. So what I'm so you, you need to preserve your base, your your pet report as just a mm -hmm. kind of a template. So for okay. your results later, you can go back to that. Okay. okay. So you said you wanted to search for transactions that were a result of transmittal entries, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to add that as a criteria. So Add in the criteria source transmittal record. Source transmittal record. Scroll down a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then it should be not none. So instead of any of, put none of. And What's then, the difference? So, so right now we're in the criteria field, right? So we're yeah. isolating transactions that have this certain criteria fulfilled. So right now, what we're looking for are all the transactions that have, that have a value, any value, but have a value in the source transmittal record field. So we're eliminating the transactions that have no values. Okay. So none of, then click the, no, 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 oh, um, no, not yet. Go back, go back. Click the box with the arrow to the side of it, there. Okay. And then go ahead and click the none of, none of, and then the, see this, the little triangle, triangles to the right when you hover over the, there, click that, the little triangles to the right. Move your mouse a little to the right. 
This the, one. No, 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 no. The little tri. The no, no, no. The ones that um the two this little thing. angles. Yes. Select uh, multiple. Yep. Click that. And then once you've clicked that, the none, the first value that comes up, select that. None. Yep. And then click done. Okay, and then set. Click set. So now we added to the criteria. So now we have two criteria. One is it has to be posting. It has a jail impact. Number two criteria is the source transmittal record is not none, meaning it has any value. It has a value. Mm -hmm. So right now mm -hmm. we're looking at transaction cost by transmittal entries. So do you want to isolate by date, by other criteria, or do you just want to see all of the ICJs? By date. So is there a particular time frame that you're looking for? Let's say one ma a month. I can see the previous month. Previous month. Okay, so click yeah. date, look for date. Yep. And then again, do you want the date created or the transaction date? Many, most of the time they should be the same, but sometimes there are subtle differences. Let's say the, 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 the transaction dates. Right, so you're in the right field. Yeah. And yeah. so within the date, you can either set an exact date, you can okay. set on or before, or before or after, or on or before, or uh, within. So you mentioned earlier time frame, like within yeah. the past month, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so within, and then choose the date. Right. So. But is, is, is there no option where we can say uh, previous month? So we don't need to come back here every time to change the, uh, the period, the time frame. Uh, so that's the period instead of date. Um, so yeah, cancel that and instead of date, select period. Then I believe there should be a previous. Oh, not the other box. Uh, this, the, the other box. Oh, uh, okay. Let's click the period first, just to isolate the ones related to period. Yep. And then last, last period. Video, video. Yep. And then that would generally be, I think that would be a dynamic criteria depending on when you run it. So we don't need to, to choose. Uh, right. This, yeah. You can leave this blank. Right, exactly. So if you set that. So it will just always say last period. So what, mm. if you run that on June, then it will just look for May transactions. Yeah. Mm. All right, so um, the results, we it went back to the default results, unfortunately. So you would have to um, edit that again. But now... So yeah, so we'll just have to delete all of those again. So just, uh, just for this particular search, is there anything that you're looking for regarding the transactions that are not here? Are oh, we're looking the amount mainly, the okay. amount, local amount and uh, foreign amount. Okay, so add the foreign currency amount then, amount field. Okay, and then you can adjust the other results later, but for now, and how about you reorder that amount to be beside the, the amount person. field so that it's, uh, you can easily compare it. No, I mean, I'm, I, when, wherever you want to put, but I'm just saying you, you want it beside, you, know, you see there's the other amount field. If you can put it, mm -hmm. you put the two fields together so you can make that comparison. Oh, oh, here's one other thing. Whenever I add the foreign currency field, I always want to add the field called currency. So I know what currency I'm looking at. Okay. That means currency name? Yes. Just type currency.
and then move it, drag it beside the foreign currency. Yes. So at least, so you're clear what you're looking at. Hmm. All right. And then you can it hit either save or or preview to be able to get the results. Save, right? Yep. Hope it will work this time. <laughs> Praise God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you need to go to the results again to see it. Uh, yep. But it's already here. Yep. Um, and then there should be a save and run option. You see the, the triangle beside save? There should yeah, be a save, save, and, run. save and run. Yeah. 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 There. So within April, you had 2,600 posting transactions that hit. FFC and what do you want to do with these transactions do you want to further refine this search in particular ways or what how do you want to, what do you want to do with this information sorry I, I didn't get your question I was I was looking to the transactions uh, I missed the RCs Right. So, and here's another thing that I forgot to do. So, I, I said there's 2,630 transactions. That's yeah. incorrect. That's a wrong statement. There were 2,630 lines. For example, you see these two results. The first two results have the same document number, right? Yeah. yeah. So, that means these are two different lines belonging to the same transaction. transaction. Yeah. So, go back to edit this search. And I'll show you the magic of grouping. So go to results. So let me add the uh, uh, RCs here. Right, add the RCs. And I guess we can just go ahead and remove the ones that we don't want. No, you don't want the RC description. You want actual responsibility, responsibility center. Because at this point, I'm assuming what's more important is the number scroll down is it not acid there's no or Look, no, there should be scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll there oh pop, pop. you you skipped it you skipped yeah. it it's yeah go back to responsibility ah okay yeah, it it's spelled out responsibility center Oh, sorry. No error. Yep, up to you. And then go ahead and remove the other fields that we don't need. Like from the super approver to approve, yeah. then just delete that. Let's do that again. Oh, you, re you removed the source transmittal record. Um, yeah, let's add that again, especially as that's relevant to what we're searching for right now. Source transmittal record. There. Okay. So now, um, oh yeah, so the first two you can also remove order type and the asterisk. Yeah, just clean that up. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do is we're going to group the transactions. So go to document number. Go to oh, basically all of them. Sure. So go to so in the date field, there the second column summary type. Mm -hmm. Summary type. Yep. So move your mouse a little bit lower there. Click that and then click group. And select group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for numerical fields such as amount, then select uh, sum. So click 
yep you don't have to click okay just move move on to the next field go down a little bit it's a numerical so yeah date is group that's right yeah but in the next yeah. field amount select amount yep select uh, sum okay and then amount foreign currency is sum again and then for currency click group there we go for period click your group group mm -hmm. of yeah, uh, okay. you can you so, can skip the next two. You don't need them. Go just go to document that. number. Document number. Just skip. group group. Yep. Yeah. Maybe name is not very relevant right now, so just mm -hmm. go to account. Group. Mm -hmm. Responsibility center. Click group and then group the next one again. So what this is saying for the fields that you selected a summary type, the first results would only show the summary where every transaction that have those in common will be mm. grouped in one line. So go ahead and save and run that. Uh, you'll see the results. So as we put date, so every transaction for the same date would be grouped, right? Right. Same date, same currency, same period, same document number, same RC, and same source transmittal record they will be grouped according in, in one line. Instead of earlier, the result was every single line uh, was uh, displayed separately. So click save and run so you'll see the, the result. Okay. So now earlier the result was like two thousand seven hundred something lines. Yeah. But now you'll see that there's oh okay, there's two thousand six hundred different transactions. Oh wait, so okay. So you can see that the first two are still the same transaction, right? Because yeah. they have the same document number. But because they have different RCs and they have different accounts, they still yeah. display the separate lines. Yeah. Now that might be okay depending on what you're looking for, but if you really just want to display one transaction regardless of the accounts and RCs, but just one transaction per line, then you will just have to remove the RC and accounts from the grouping. Does that make sense what I said? Yes. So, so that um, in the earlier criteria, I mean, in the results tab, remove the group from account and RC and then it will just show the, the transactions. So a criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so go back to the results. So in the um, RC, just, just remove the, the group. Just hit select the blank. Yep. And then same with the amount so account. Oh yeah. Hit the blank the top or option and then click OK and then with the same with the account. So again, and this is, again, this is depending on what you want to see. It's up to you. Um, it, it just depends on, on what you're looking for. And so if you save and run that, see the, you'll see the result. So now there's 1,300 unique transactions. So if you want to dive in into one of those, you see that some of them are zero net. That means because, yeah. um, but, but some of them do have a net. And you can see that uh, the, the amount foreign currency and the amount column is the same because you're looking at FFC. Yeah. And, yeah. and FFC has a base currency of, of US dollars. US, yeah. <laughs> But if you run this same saved search in a currency with a different, with an entity that has a different currency, it will be different. So if you want to see the detail of one particular transaction, you actually want to see the accounts and the RCs involved in that transaction. Click any of the lines. Like for example, the first one, the one that says document I can number. click the date. Yeah. Uh, so if, okay. you, if you click, well, if you click the date, then it will show you all of the the, the transactions that have April of that 1 date. of that through. But if you want to just click 
the detail of one transaction, then you click the document number. So it depends on how you want to drill down. Okay. So that's the detail. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic. Fantastic. I'm going to pause the recording again because we've seen the results.